So hello and welcome to the first episode of a new series on this channel that I did. I wanted it to come out by the 20th for the anniversary. I really did. But we just had such a hard time getting recording schedules together for me and Jacob. But uh, yeah, by the way, Jacob's here. Everybody say hi to Jacob. Hi. And what we're going to be doing is every day over the next two weeks or so, we're going to be releasing a retrospective on each Fire Emblem game. And uh, start off. Um, it's Jacob and I talking about Shadow Dragon. Uh, uh, do we want to cover the original versions? Or... Oh, we can do that briefly. Yeah. Um, what really needs to be said? Do we, do we want to be nice about it? or Release 420, 1990 uh, on the NES. Never released in the U.S. Sucks balls. Um, remade okay. as the first half of Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem in 1994, I want to say? January 1994. All right, yeah. Which is why all the copyright stuff in it still says 1993. Um, less bad, but still pretty bad? That's going to get me a lot of flack. But it's true. Uh, the important thing to know is that um, when comparing the three versions, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light had... Uh, sorry, I was getting Vietnam flashbacks from it really quick. Um, oh, well, actually, I guess um, Shadow Dragon: The Blade of Light is better because it did not remove Daros, and Daros is the best boy. No, that's actually something to get into. Um, <laughs> Why did he have to remove Daros? With the, the first Abel. few versions um, and Rice. The original Shadow Dragon: The Blade of Light had twenty-five chapters and. Um, all of the units you might know, um, what happened whenever they remade it on the SNES is that they improved a lot of the mechanics slightly. Um, I know what it wanted to do at this point. It was kind of obvious if you look at it. Yeah, it was kind of um, more along the lines of what would eventually become Genealogy the Holy War. Uh, well, oh, it no, definitely it's not seems terrible. like an in-between between Shadow Dragon, the Blade of Light, and Genealogy. Okay, look, let me put it into perspective. You know weapon levels? You know weapon levels, right? I call yes, like weapon, weapon levels. levels. Okay, so um, instead of having E through A, like literally every after uh, Mystery of the Emblem, they were stats that you got when leveling up. So it is totally possible to get weapon levels in Fire Emblem 1 and Fire Emblem 3. That would be just the worst. Yeah, so basically... The I'm way sorry, it works is level get... forty Marth, but he only has a D in swords. It's, it's like it's measured in actual numbers. Well, in, um, level forty Marth, but still, it's, it's measured in actual numbers in one. In, um, like uh, you get like, like weapon level three or weapon level twenty or something. Um, each class has different cap for weapon level. One benefit to this is that weapon level is shared between all the weapons that unit can use, but this doesn't really matter in every three because every class can only really use one weapon at a time. Mm -hmm. Two with dismounting. Talk about it, but um. Oh yeah, force dismounting. You'll hear a lot more complaints about that in a couple episodes. Uh, yeah, I, I whenever you play uh, Mister the Emblem, you, you're really gonna need to get used to uh, <laughs> you're really gonna get need to get used. To to a sword infantry the um but something to consider when just discussing the different versions is um in fire emblem 3 uh they removed about five chapters from uh fire emblem 1 and they removed five characters i, I think six characters let me let me count them off um because there's jake Riss, Daros, Riss, no, no, uh, Riss, Daros, um Jake Beck and I believe Gato was the last one they cut so that makes six. Yeah that sounds about right. The only one who continued to exist in Mr. Diablo but he was demoted to pure NPC status. He didn't even take the field in that version. Yeah which is probably why he's not playable in New Mystery. Yeah though ironically there is a lot of data in New Mystery that indicate he was going to actually join as a playable unit at the same time that Naki did. Like Hmm. Well, in uh, chapter, in chapter, I believe twenty three, it was. Yeah, that would have. It's just Nagi jumped by herself in the in the finalized version. 
So, um, but thankfully... It's closer to the Game Boy Advance games, particularly um, 6 and 7, in terms of how it operates now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, um, yeah we've and, got the regular uh, they... weapon levels you see in every game. Um, we've got a regular preparation screen, very similar to what we see elsewhere. And in a prologue. Um, no support still. Uh, if you're playing your normal well, There are supports. But um, it revamped it, no support a lot. I guess. Other than that, I don't think same. most people really appreciate how drastically the mechanics work. Um, and of course, drastically increased. Um, the original Fire Emblem one, there's like twelve different tracks throughout the entire game. Uh, book one, I think, around the ballpark of thirty different tracks, and uh, Shadow Dragon has about a hundred tracks. So very extremely expanded soundtrack. It's just on book three. It's basically a remake of Fire Emblem Three Book One, not Book Three. <laughs> Basically, a remake of book one, and here's to all the retcons that were sort of established by book one, because book one did sort of modify the story of Fire Emblem One to better mesh with book two and what they wanted to set up. So, but hey, here's to the retcons in book one, but it also takes all the content that was cut from and works it back into the game to sort of make a definitive version in that regard. I will say that. One thing that did improve a lot, not just from the original 1 and 3, but from just previous Fire Emblem games, is this game is some of my favorite writing in the series. Like, it is top tier. When you feel it, you really feel it. The problem is, the writing is almost non-existent. You think it's not existent in this game? <laughs> I mean, I guess, compared to 1 and 3, this is like... yeah. One of the things, like, YM can, I actually showed YM can the original thing to comparison for something, like a comparison of the original scene. Mm -hmm. Um, you know the Doc Pontifex chapter, right? Yeah. Uh, this is gonna turn into an episode of just shitting on one and three, isn't it? But uh, anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, in the original version of Dark Pontifex in book one, Garnet monologuing to himself. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, some of the same dialogue is there, except Garnif, Marth doesn't even participate in that conversation. Garnif is an evil monologue there, and it is so much worse. And <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of the nuance to his plan that he does in the remake. Like, mm -hmm. trying to get Marth to go around the continent and do his work for him, that's non-existent. He's literally just sitting there monologuing and that's going to kill Marth. Uh, but let me rephrase that. Coming off of the Tellius games, there's not a lot of writing. <laughs> Coming off there's... of the Japanese version of Radiant Dawn. Is that better? I think even the English version of Radiant Dawn has more writing. Yeah, but... No, that, that, that's a conversation for another, for another episode. Yeah, another episode we're really going to get into that. Yeah, but suffice Let's to just say... say uh, Treehouse is not really kind to the series sometimes. No, not whatsoever. Um, um, but, yeah, the writing's great. I just wish there was more of it. I wish that we got the fully talk about... fleshed out characters and the fully fleshed out um, storyline that we got in previous games. And especially if we compare it to, like, Echoes, which came out just a couple years later. So much better. Basically, Intelligent Systems had a bit of a learning curve with the remakes. It was pretty clear whenever Shadow there were some aspects of liked about it and really appreciated in the remake and others that uh, were really divisive along people including lack of support so basically a lot of dragon were actually addressed in the history and they're addressed in such a way it's pretty clear that a system new systems knew there was sort of backlash to the absence of certain mechanics like supports and it's pretty clear that new mystery is sort of geared to shadow shortcomings 
as yeah. a remake. Each remake has definitely gotten better and better, so I really look forward to whatever remake they do next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Echoes is sort of built on the foundation that New Mystery laid, and Intelligence has even said they they looked at New Mystery and then went forward from there and sort of refined a lot of the aspects uh, that they used with Echoes. With that said, there is probably one elephant in the room with uh, Shadow Dragon that uh, I would have rather... Because even Intelligent Systems tries to avoid talking about this and kind of pretend it didn't happen. But uh, are we going to address the elephant in the room? I, I think we kind of have to. We couldn't properly rate this game if we didn't. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I can properly rate this game without acknowledging this, I We do can it properly rate it, but it wouldn't be providing all the information to those people who haven't played Shadow uh, okay. Dragon or are still listening to this for some reason. Yeah, it's just Shadow the Dragon thing is, is you can literally play say. Shadow Dragon without ever knowing this exists. So, um, in a lot of games, there are paralogs. Um, little side story chapters that have the uh, extra story content or extra characters. Yeah, and, and typically it's a reward to get for the... playing the game well. For typically not to get the die full ending, quickly. you would have to do things. Um, I know this is a requirement in Binding Blade, and in FE7, in order to get the Hector Mode ending, you had to unlock paralogs. That wasn't a requirement yeah. to get the final chapters. Even in New Mystery, in order to get the full ending, pretty sure you have to do the paralogs there. So usually paralogs are this sort of portion of the game that you're encouraged to unlock in order to get everything. Yeah, and like I said, they're uh, like rewards for good play. That is not the case in Shadow Dragon, where you only get paralogs for killing people. You have to have, what, less than 15 units to get into each paralog? Less than 15 at every check, yeah. Yeah, but... The thing is, this is such an awkward requirement. It doesn't affect... Okay, you can actually end up getting an alternate bad ending by getting these paralogs. Mm -hmm. Weird thing. That's extremely unnatural for the series. This is probably the one thing that people hate the most about Shadow Dragon. Ironic, because if you didn't know this existed play in the game, you would never... Yeah, like, even if you're just, like, a... First time Fire Emblem player, you're really bad. You're not worrying about going back and saving units. But you probably like, seriously, I have had enough units to get to that point. Like seriously, I have had literally at this point twenty three people dragon never having played a Fire Emblem game through before. I just give them Shadow Dragon, walk them through it. None of them even knew this existed. And like as somebody who actually went through and did this let's play of going through the like the whole game with the paralogs. It is not worth it. As much as I love Athena, as much as I think Horus is one of the best characters in Arcanea, it's not worth it. Just get a make new mystery. It's funny because Intelligent Systems is not acknowledges them as being characters from New Mystery of the Emblem. They don't even acknowledge this in Shadow. Even as far back as Awakening, they were counted as characters from New Mystery of the Emblem. Not Shadow Dragon. Oh, that is super weird because in the context of New Mystery, they are referred to as characters who actually were there in Shadow Dragon. Despite the fact that that canonically is impossible because everybody survived Shadow Dragon. Okay, to be fair, only sort of maybe the case with Athena, Horus, Etzel, and Ymir. And they're kind of ambiguous on it. With Norne, Norn and he explicitly uh, say that they weren't active during the War of Shadows and the same with Nagi. But yeah, it's okay. I guess Nagi is limits. definitely, they play out like a new mystery. Marth and Nagi don't know each other. They only vaguely recognize each other from the cyclical nature of Shadow Dragon. And then Frey is confirmed to be the sacrifice. And Norn is, they kind of imply that Norn sort of just did things off screen in Shadow Dragon. They didn't yeah, really let's not get just... into that right now. But I, I know yeah. what you're implying. Yeah. Um, and the, but, like, characters like Horus and Athena are flat out stated when they appear in New Mystery that they helped Marth in the previous war. So, that's kind of a weird thing. I prefer thing. Malice, I I prefer Malice myself come, anyways. They kind of recognize come New Mystery that they made a mistake there, and they really shouldn't have done that. Even in, even in, even in Awakening and Heroes, they don't acknowledge these paralogs existed. This is the Fire Emblem's let's never speak of this again moment. Is yes, these it really ones. is. Um, let's see. That is the most notable negative part of the game. 
that and not having as much writing as I'd like. Um, yeah, and are there I, any other big negatives you th- would like to mention about this? No, it's just <sighs> it's not a bad game. It's just lacking in certain things that we'd expect. You think that's the best way to describe it? Honestly, I don't really think it's lacking thing if you're going into this as sort of what it is. If you know what you're getting into. Yeah, if you go into this as it's the Fire first Emblem game, in game the that's really, really tailored to being a pretty basic Fire Emblem that is sort of designed to be hey, this is the core basics of Fire Emblem. This is the game that sort of is meant to be the Fire Emblem, essentially. Mm-hmm. This is the core that all the other games come off of and expand upon. And basically, they figured out what Fire Emblem did at 3 and 11's release. They basically didn't give all the bells and whistles to FE11. They basically said, here's the refined core that definitely fire emblem is and they sort of tailored it towards new players with the prologue mm-hmm. sort of in a similar way to fe7 except they leaned even harder on new players with this and the prologue is more enjoyable than lin mode however as much as i love all the characters in lin mode i lin mode which isn't a tutorial yeah like, actually, Lin Hard Mode is one of my favorite parts of the series, but... Yeah, Lin Hard Mode was good, but, you know, Lin Easy Mode, would you have to play the first time through, sucks. Yeah. Though, interestingly, I'm pretty sure that's only true in the English version. God damn it. <laughs> version, if you connect Binding Blade to it, you can, uh, either, I believe, either start on Lin Hard Mode or skip to L. I'm mad. I'm so mad. Yeah. Yeah, NOA. NOA sucks sometimes. And I will admit that the gameplay for what it is is actually pretty refined. It's well made. Um, yeah, even the class system, like this class system and the GBA class system are pretty much every other variation of the class system sort of stems from. Yeah. In so far as things so. one like... thing that they definitely add in other games that I really wish they had here, a resistance step. Okay, yeah. Dude. For those of you who this haven't played it, unless you have magic, you don't have resistance. This is going to be a shit on FE1 episode, isn't it? <laughs> no, don't worry. We're going to have an FE3 episode, too. Okay. Well, this is kind of the FE3 part one episode, but uh, yeah. in the original Shadow Dragon... How do I explain this? Um... There was a, an issue in Shadow Dragon in the Blade of Light where a programming issue where if any unit had any resistance, any playable unit, resistance programmed onto them, the game would crash going into the next chapter. So basically, everyone, every single playable unit in FE1 had... And this is why throughout the series, physical units tend to have bad resistance is because it all stems from the fact that the resistance stat was broken in FE1 outright. I will say, though, there is one unit that's playable in FE1 that has a resistance stat, and that's Gato. Yeah, Gato. Because you do not start a new chapter with him in the party. He shows up at the last possible second. Yeah, so the game won't crash going to the next chapter because there is no next chapter, so he actually does have a resistance stat. And this kind of carries over. They did remedy this in... um, Guide in and going forward, I believe, anyway, and then going forward into Mystery of the Emblem, this wasn't an issue. But even in Shadow Dragon, units don't have no, but you can see the DNA of, of physical units having very low resistance carry over into later installments, and this is still true in Shadow Dragon. Uh, yeah, Ballisticians are notable in this game, I think, because this is the only game aside from FE1 are playable. And uh, in Fates, they aren't really a part of the main game. Um, it's a really interesting class, actually, and I really like how they were implemented. Yeah, it's just in the original Shadow Dragon, the Blade of Light, kind of, because they were basically bow armors. Yeah, that's not as good. <laughs> At all. No. Um, this game's biggest strength 
is probably acting as a new player's fire emblem. Would you say that? I, I know not everybody would agree with that, but as somebody who, for whom this was my first fire emblem, I'll say yes. This and Blazing Blade, probably I would venture to say the most ideal starting points just because of how they handle the player. I feel like this one's a little more ideal if you have players who don't all the complexities that Blazing Blade has, like the magic triangle and system, etc., all at once. Uh, I guess we haven't really talked about the story at all, have we? No, we have not. Uh, we've danced around it a little bit, but let's talk about that, I guess. So, um, Marth, that guy from the Smash games, which is, chances are that's how you learned what Fire Emblem was. Um, these are his games. Start off when he's 14. Um, gets kicked out of his homeland. It's Generally has a pretty generic starting for Fire Emblem, but that's kind of because this was the first Fire Emblem story. You know, all their now, Fire stories are kind of coming the off story of actually a lot of improvements over the first th three versions. FE1 had a really generic NES-style story. And this was mostly retained in FE3, except they added a few twists and turns along with things that are kept in Shadow Dragon. However, Shadow Dragon itself adds a lot of depth to this now it's not a lot to drastically change it in some ways yes it is drastically changing but marth has an actual personality yeah this is true and between shadow dragon and new mystery how much do we want people to hate me um now i'll leave that up to you alongside um, probably Leif and Edelgard, Marth probably has some of the most dynamic series between Shadow Dragon and New Mystery. I just don't feel like the older New Mystery translation did Marth a lot of justice compared to what he was in the Japanese version, sadly. Which is why a lot of people probably don't realize this, even people who have played the original New Mystery. Yeah, I really, honestly... He doesn't... Yeah. Um, I, I, I was going to agree with you, but that, yeah. Um, I wasn't expecting a lot going to this, and the, especially, you mentioned the old Heroes of Light and Shadow, um, New Mystery of the Emblem translation, mm -hmm. which was massive, it was pretty disappointing, yeah. Um, but mm. there's definitely the vestiges of it in there. You can see what they were trying to get at. They just didn't do it very well. They do it a lot better than yeah, Shadow Dragon, which is why I call out like how great that game's writing is. Because they do get that across. You can feel Marth's feelings change as you go from... Yeah, this is actually one of the better Fire Emblem localizations. I feel like that mystery gets a better localization or translation or however that has to happen. I feel like a lot more people will be able to appreciate Marth at some I hope so. I also hope so. No, of course you hope so. He's your favorite lord. No, he's up there. What do you top call him three. your favorite? I might. He's probably in the top three. Yeah. Which is funny because those kind of did the same thing with all of them, if you think about it. Yeah, I can see it. I didn't. Um, basically, didn't exist either. <laughs> yeah, no, he really didn't. I he existed more than Celica, but that is a ridiculously low bar to set. Celica didn't even have her own personal weapon in Gaiden. No. But <laughs> and honestly, Mila barely existed in Gaiden, as he figured out. But we'll get into that <laughs> when we get to the Echoes episode. Um, yeah, Shadow Dragon the benefit of support to show off a lot of Marth's character like uh, New Mystery does, but his character still really shines through and kind of carries things. This game is similar to Thracia in that respect, I want to say, and how it has a really strong main cast, but an underdeveloped side cast. Mm. And I think they edged out over Thracia not by itself, but pretty much purely by dint of New Mystery, which is this game's cast at least. 
Yeah. New Mystery is pretty much the uh, yeah. Like honestly, the West lost cast. out on a lot from New Mystery not being localized. Yeah, New Mystery had a lot, a lot. I would say, like with Echoes, how I say that I want to say ninety percent of Valentia's lore came from Echoes alone. I want to say a good sixty-five percent of more, of lore, just character lore, background lore, etc., comes from New Mystery. Not from Mystery of the Emblem, New Mystery specifically. That means yeah. out of four games that have taken place in Arcanea, most out of, of the that four came. games that take place in Arcanea, well, five of them PS Fire, but we were not going. Uh, no, PS because... Fire Emblem is pretty much FE twelve. PS Fire Emblem is only like four chapters, but yeah. the majority of the characterization from Arcanea from New Mystery. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, See, I, guess. I would say bots would probably be this game is really good if you go in knowing what to expect, which is blueprint of Fire Emblem or definitely a new player's Fire Emblem, one of the two. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, I guess from here we can talk about some of the uh, just random things they have in this game. We can talk about the forging, the reclassing, and the uh, replacement units, which are just the best part of the game. Oh, God. We want to talk about Fire Emblem's... Uh... No, what? what? <sighs> I just love the... So, I just love the replacement units because of their names, honestly. So, if you kill off too many units in Shadow Dragon, like, let's say you're going for a Paralog run, um, you don't have enough units to fill up one chapter, you will get extra quote-unquote replacement units which have terrible stats come with iron weapons and they have names like weak or uh let, let me grab a list of these yeah you want to talk about replacement units being obscure because paralogs are already really obscure replacement units are even really obscure you want to get into really fucking heckin obscure right mm-hmm what a lot of people don't know, these the replacement units actually exist in Fire Emblem 2. Oh, they do? Yeah, and to the extent they even have the same names in both English and Japanese. Mainly, I believe they got handed out via the Energar shop in that game. Uh, I guess this was the game that, that introduced forging in the sense of weapons whereas in um path of radiance and radiant dawn forging was creating new weapons which is actually what forging is this is technically tempering and uh yeah really forging technically you're tempering the weapon and not forging it so yeah, if, you guys, if you guys have played heroes or if you've played three houses or if you've played shadows of valentia then you'll kind of know what forging is like but instead of having just, like, um, you can turn this weapon to whatever weapon plus, or you can get a couple extra stats off of it. In this game, your weapons are completely customizable. You can rename them. You can change everything. You can change their weight, their critical stat, how much damage they deal. All right, well, uh, what are your closing thoughts on On Shadow Dragon as a whole, or just the forging part? Anything, really. Um, let's see. We didn't really talk about reclassing. We can jump through that real fast. Um, you can... Yeah, this is the game that introduced reclassing as a concept, and uh, it was yeah, in a very more as a form. way of replacing units that you've lost than anything else. Mm -hmm. But it can have some really funny things. Well, the biggest issue is you can't reclass to anything that a character would usually be able to get. There's two sets of reclassing options for men. Which, yeah, for, for guys, female have girls can have any possible female class. Mm, any possible female reclassed into, yeah. Yeah. And obviously, um, anyone who doesn't promote can't be reclassed. So that means your Thieves, your Marth, and your Ballisticians, and your Tiki, and your Bantu. And Freelancer. Oh yes, and your Zany. Could mention the Freelancer, because that's a class that only exists in Yes, and, and uh, it's a great Jared. idea, and why is it not in fit? in Heroes yet. They probably will add Heroes, just not. It has to happen. 
And I'm expecting a Loki ult will probably have the same skill that uh, Zane does. So as a whole, I like the game. It's... I wish there was more of it. Um, but that there are far worse complaints to have. I might end up giving it a B, I think. What do you think? The thing about this is, I even perspective which is why this is difficult you can view it from the perspective of a game in its own right but also as a game for new players because it de- let's go for the game you're going into right. this as a whole compared to the rest of the series as a whole compared to the rest of the series i would mind to give it a b plus all right which i think is the same rating i gave three. that's solid Oh. Yeah, I would probably give it a B plus. All I think right. its biggest strength, though, is definitely the game that you want new players to for Blazing Blade. This is the ideal starting point, along with Blazing Blade. Yep. Um, it's a great game for that. Just Yeah, there are some parts that can get a little overwhelming, but as long as you focus in on the main game itself and don't get too into the forging and stuff, you'll be fine. Or trying yeah, to reclassing out. in particular is oh, yeah, way too like just just I really need to do a reclass run at some point. It looks like a lot of fun. Did you try it? I did try it once, but I did a reclass Iron Man run, and that was a mistake. Oh boy! <laughs> because I killed off Harden, and I yeah, I that's like a mistake. Off Harden, I like Harden. That's a mistake indeed. Admittedly, Harden was a bishop, so, you know, he was only so useful at that. Uh, But yeah, I guess we'll leave you guys be. Thank you guys for listening, and come back tomorrow to hear us talk about um, Echoes, Shadows of Valentia, and Gaiden, I guess. Yeah, we'll just throw Gaiden at the start like that, too. Yep. All right, goodbye. All right.